Hello everyone, this is Cindy. I'm attempting to do something a little different today. I think they call them process videos. It's kind of showing you how to do something. Um, I've been struggling lately with tags, journaling cards, that sort of thing. It seems like everything I have already made doesn't work or I don't like it anymore or I just don't have any ideas. So um, I thought I'd just revisit some ideas I collected when I first heard about junk journals. I was reading everything I could find in magazines and um, watching lots of YouTube videos. And I thought, okay, if I don't start writing stuff down, I'm going to forget ideas. So I just, on little bits and pieces of paper here and there, I would write notes, quotes. I would draw sketches of the ideas. I'm not an artist, but these are my pretty rough drawings. I would make samples or whatever. And I just collected them all in this notebook. So... I challenged myself to go back through all these, to look at everything again, and see if I can come up with 100 ideas for tags, just so that um, in the future, if I kind of got in a rut, I can revisit these videos or um, just have a sample book of some ideas. So anyway, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to try to do five today in this video. Uh, sometimes it runs kind of long, so I'll try to keep it as short as I can. So let's just get going. Number one, oh, and I want to say at the onset that I'm not claiming that any of these ideas are mine. Absolutely not mine. That's why I had that notebook. It's where I collected other people's ideas. And this is long before I realized I should be writing down where I got the idea. So a lot of them from uh, Papercraft Magazine, which I believe is an... Um, you know, in print anymore. A lot of them are from YouTube. So if you have any idea whose idea these are, uh, you can write it in the comments below. Um, first idea, I know I saw recently on YouTube and I kind of have an idea of who it was, but I don't want to say in case I'm wrong. And um, sometimes people will just barely mention an idea uh, or something and it gives me an idea. So uh, Everybody, of course, is a jumping off place for everybody else. So what these are are like little booklets. And it's just your basic scrap papers, leftover papers. And it has a picture stapled on the front. Now the picture can be a digiprint like these that I printed off the internet. These are from Christy Art Designs on Etsy. And um, it doesn't have to be the same size as your paper. It can be bigger, larger, smaller, whatever. Uh, or if the pictures can be some like you got from the book that you're working on. Like this is from the book I'm doing, Anne of Green Gables. So basically you just take, collect your papers and get them kind of lined up. Get a picture that you want to use. Put it over the top. Put a couple of staples in it. And you're done. Unless you want to trim your pages up a little, you can do that. I get them all the same. I cut bottoms of mine sometimes with these deckle scissors just to give them a rough edge, like torn paper. These scissors I've had forever, back in the old scrapbooking days. It's called deckle scissors. I'm sure they're still available. I'm not sure though, but I bet they are. Anyway, that's idea number one. And this is the book I'm working on. I thought I'm gonna get a book ready so that I can start putting some of these ideas I make in a book. This is not an old book. It was like 19, 2009 or 2007, but of course it's an old story, Anne of Green Gables. And this was a condensed version of it, so I had no qualms ripping it up because I think people should be reading the full version of it. Um, it was in good shape though, so I didn't want to leave lose the spine, so I kept the spine and just put two signatures in it. And um, I've already got some pockets in here and some ideas kind of where I want these. So. I'm putting this little uh, booklet in this little book pocket right there. So that's where she's going. All right, I did, that's idea number one. Oh, I forgot to mention that. Lots of times when you're ripping pages out of the books, you'll see some that's got blank spaces like this. I use these for putting on the backs of tags. There's a bigger spot there. Or um, that some of the pages I used in my little booklets was from these. So everything can be used. All right, I did number one. I did number two. I know where I got this idea from. It was uh, Gail Agnostinelli showed this the other day on her um, YouTube channel. And it is a accordion pocket, I guess you would say, or journaling spot. And it folds up 
like that. You glue it in the corner of your book and then, so that corner's glued and then it pops out like this so you have all this journaling space. And then when you're not using it, it folds back up. It reminded me of scrapbooking days. We used to call these squash books, I think, accordion books. And this is two of them glued together. You just overlap two squares and glue them together. And of course you made them bigger than this and you put photographs and stickers and things and decorated them. And actually I had this little sample already made up in my little black notebook. But uh, the trick is getting it folded. It's not hard. It's just kind of awkward. So let's see if we can make one real quick. Get all these scraps out of the way. You need a square of paper. So you can measure a square or use your paper trimmer to get a square. An easier way though is just to fold your paper into a triangle. Just match that point with this side. And put your corner down here. And crease it. Now, you really need this crease to be good. Really sharp. And really it works better I think if it's going both directions. Oops, cut that off. Okay, get your scissors and cut this. And there's your square. Okay, now we're gonna fold it. Get it out of the way. So it's into a rectangle. And I did not do a good job of cutting that at all. Look at that. So let's trim it off. Okay, rectangle. Rectangle this way. And let's refold that triangle since I cut it off again. Oops, make sure I get the right one, this side. Okay, now the tricky part is getting it to fold in on itself. Well, let me go back to the one I have here since I know I folded it square. Um, you just have to kind of work with your uh, squares that have triangles. Two squares have triangles and two squares are just plain squares. So get these to fold in and just squish it down like that. You'll just have to work with it a little bit and get your creases good and get your point good. Just kind of fold them in and then just fold it in on that bottom square and down and in like that. I'm sorry I'm not doing a very good job of just uh, Demonstrating it, but if you just get your paper out and practice, you'll you'll get there. Now, putting it in the book. Let's see, I marked it so I could find it fast. Here's one I've already glued in my book, and I saw this idea in another place. It was to take a piece of twine and glue it underneath this, and that way, when you're not using it, you can just tie a bow and it keeps it folded down. Of course, you can also use a paper clip to do that. But here it is in my book, and I've taken this square, glued it down, so it folds back when I'm not in, it's not in use, and then it opens up when I want to write. So you just tie that bow back, and it's good. All right, that's number two. Number three is pretty simple. It is a tag. No, not a tag. A ticket. <laughs> it is a tag. It's a tag shaped like a ticket. And we've all seen these. You can buy them in digital kits. You can make them easily. Um, just a rectangle piece of paper with the corners notched off. And I just decorated this one with an image from Christy Art Designs. And basically you take a rectangular piece of paper and a pair of scissors and you can just notch out that edge. Go around. Make it as big or small as you want. You can do it a little bigger. You can do it more rounded, and you have a ticket. Now, I have a pair of scissors that I've had since scrapbooking days, and they are corner rounded. It's a corner rounded pair of scissors. So if I say this is my corner, I should do it this way. Um, I fit it in here, and it cuts a really big uh, corner. Or I can reverse them, put it in, and it cuts that notch out. And that's the notch I really need for a ticket. Now, if I was making a really big ticket, that would work. 
but since I'm making a smaller one, I'm lining it up with these two black lines right here. Normally you'd line it up to the yellow edges there, but I'm just doing the black lines and it gives me a pretty good uh, size. Now, of course, I can move it in and out if I wanted it bigger or smaller. But, like I said, it could be done with just a plain pair of scissors as well. So, um, that's the ticket. And you can just decorate it like I did with this one, uh, zigzagging, or I just stamped on these. So, that's the second one. And I'm going to put these in here. I have a little tuck spot here. I'm just going to tuck a couple of tickets there. Okay. Get rid of all these pieces. All right, number four. This one involves a little bit more work. And this idea, I'm pretty sure I got it out of the paper craft magazine. Um, it takes a couple of layers, three layers of cardstock, and then you uh, hand stitch these cross uh, X's on it. And I've done a couple of them. And the thing is, it looks like this on the back, or worse, or better, depending on how good you are. Um, but you can cover it with coffee stained paper um, and make it look a little better on the back. So just depending on what you want. But that's the front. And basically it's three layers of graduated sizes of cardstock and you're just going to glue them on. You need to glue it fairly well because you're not going to be doing any other stitching other than that hand stitching. And just kind of line these up and I think I made these like two and a half inches and then two and a quarter inches and then two inches. And then I think it was six inches and then five and three quarter inches and then five and a half inches. So I just kind of went down like a, a quarter inch each time just so I can get the different sizes. And of course, the sizes depend on what you need for your journal. And then to make the holes for the stitches, it's pretty tough trying to get this needle through. Um, so I try to punch the holes in advance and I know I need four holes per little X. So putting two in the bottom and I'm not measuring it. I'm just eyeballing it. One thing I will tell you though, that um, bottom piece of scrapbook paper, cardstock, whatever, needs to be pretty thick because it, if not, you're going to, you have a tendency to tear it. Now the top couple of layers, it doesn't matter as much because they're, you know, got layers behind them, but that, but that, like this green one here, needs to be pretty thick. So anyway, punch. Ugh. I'm not going to take time to do all these. I'll just do a few so you can get the idea. But you go around and you'd punch two on the side and two on each end. And then you get you some, I'm using embroidery floss. You can use twine or whatever string you want. Thread it on a needle. And this is just the needle I use when I'm binding a book. And my embroidery floss, I folded it in half, so I've got a loop here on the end. And that's where I'm going to thread my needle. And here's how I thread needles. Doesn't matter what size string I use or the, what size the eye of the needle is, I do the same every way. I wrap the string around the needle, and then I squeeze it, and then squish that through that eye of the needle. And it goes through pretty easy. Okay, now I need to make sure this loop is the bottom part. And I'll show you why. All right, I'm gonna go up, pull it through, just let that hang there for a minute, and then cross over. And then if you take your needle and run it through this loop, that will tie off basically your end so it won't come loose. All right, then we'll come back up over here, cross over. And come down and that makes our little cross stitch and then just slide over to the next one just do the same thing you're just going to follow it all the way around and 
and you can make it as neat or as sloppy as you want. I think it's just supposed to look handmade, so I don't, so I don't care about the measurements on it. Now, I'm going to try to go this way, so kind of have a straight line. Now, sometimes I remember and sometimes I don't remember, so. And then if you can think ahead enough, oops, see, the hole broke. So let's just move it back a little. Poke another one. And no one will even notice that that's broken. So if you're thinking ahead, you can end up in the same line. So that if you go to your next holes, your line is straight. If you were to do that, then you might not need to cover it with card, uh, coffee dyed paper, but usually I need to cover it with coffee dyed paper. So anyway, you just continue all the way around and it looks like that when you're finished. So anyway, this is idea number four. I'm not sure what we would call it, just a, a tag with stitching on it. Okay, number five is not really a tag. It's photo corners for like a journaling card. And here's where I've simulated it being in a book. So you got four tags glued down. And you got this journaling card, I'm mean not tags, photo corners glued down. And um, you take this out right on both sides, whatever, put a picture on it. And then when you're done, you just slip it back in the photo corners. So like I said, it's not really a journaling card. It's just kind of a way to display, I guess you would say, a journaling card. So what I did on mine, to make mine, was I took some old envelopes. Because if, uh, if you're lucky, then they'll have a corner where there's no printing. And I pulled this one just to show you that sometimes you get lucky and you can get colored ones. Or this one has a print on the outside. But for today, I'm just going to use some white ones. And what I did was measure, because I wanted them all to be pretty much the same size. So I measured an inch up and an inch up this way. So I make two marks. So what I'm going to do is take some decorative scissors. And sometimes these cut and sometimes they don't. And I'm just going to connect those two dots, and there's my triangle. Okay? Now I can, um, of course, ink those up, stamp on them, do whatever I want to to decorate them. And then um, put them on my journaling card and then glue them in the book. Just mark it up an inch. See, this envelope has two good corners. Okay, once you get them inked up and decorated however you want, you'll slip them on your uh, journaling card. Sometimes that's easy, sometimes it's not. And sometimes they have a little extra piece of paper in there and it makes it a little hard to get on. Here we go. Okay, once you get them on, then you take them to your book. Turn it over. Lots of glue, lots of glue, lots of glue. And then put it on like that. Much easier to do it that way. And of course, you gotta make sure you don't get glue on your journaling card. Once you get them basically in, glued down, like I said, then you can take that card out and let it finish gluing. 
but it's much easier to do it this way than it is to say, all right, my journaling card's four inches square, so mark four over and glue that one down, mark four over and glue that one down. That's way too hard. You'll never get it lined up right. So put them on your journaling card and then glue. Okay, so that's idea number four, photo corners. Okay, I'll all these on the books. All right, number, was that number five? Oh, gosh, I lost my spot. Place. I think that was number. That was number five. So that's it for today. So let's just recap what we did. We did, and I'll show you in here if I can find it real quick. We know we did the little booklet with uh, our person's name on it, and we did our little accordion book. And we did the tickets. We did the photo corners, which I wanted to show you the one in here. So I'll find it. I'll find it some other time, I guess. And then, of course, we did um, this one, which I did not place in the book, but uh, the one with the stitching. So anyway, I thank you for watching, and, oh, here it is. Here's my four photo corners that I decorated, and then here's my journaling card that hopefully slips out. Anyway, that's the five ideas for today, so thanks for watching. Bye.